I wish I knew it was going to be truly an unpopular direction and just to be confident in it because some people going into it was like, well, I'm going to be a Christian athlete and I'm going to win over my campus and all these people are going to come to know Jesus. But no one tells you the behind the scenes of that. You're getting made fun of, like the the back and forth internal struggle of wanting to experience what everyone else is experiencing and the fight between is this a uh, have to I have to do this or I don't or well God's not going to want me to do that so you reluctant reluctantly do it, don't do it but really it's like no you get to not do that because this is a better direction this is a better lifestyle god is trying to save you from a lot of stuff that you don't need to go through and god wants to use you i believe every single person has a ministry ministry isn't just for preachers and it's not just for pastors it's the way you shine the light that god gave you through his spirit in all spaces that he's trusted you to walk that means you on your college campus that means you at your corporate job that means you in high school that means you with your friends at the bar or the restaurant that means you wherever you are you have the responsibility to shine god's light in that space and you get the chance to friend you are beautiful you are worthy and you are made to shine everybody and welcome back to another episode of the made to shine show i am so excited because we have someone whose energy i was just obsessed with from afar looking at his <laughs> instagram and social media up until this point and now even up close we have the amazing inspiring just doing so many amazing things for the kingdom andy julian with us today andy thank you for being on the show Oh my goodness. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm excited. Oh, I'm so excited. And it's funny, you know, before this, we were talking and you mentioned like being someone that just likes the spirit to guide the conversation. And, and it's, that's what made to shine is like, I always Absolutely. say, like I, I do the prep work. I have some questions, but I really love my favorite conversations are the ones where it's like, whoa, God, I didn't even think to ask that, or I didn't think he was going to say that. And um, so I'm so excited for what's in store. And as everyone knows on this podcast, Andy, and what we were talking about previously, the mission of this show is to remind every single person they have a ministry. Ministry right. isn't just for pastors and preachers. It's the way you live your life and shine God's light in all that you do. And mm -hmm. um, from afar watching you, I mean, you're a husband, you're a fitness pro, you're a dad, you're an author, you're a pastor, you're a sports host. Like you're doing so many things that you shine God's light in all that you do. And so mm. I'm honored to have you on, shine some light on the show today. And um, just thank you for being here, truly. Thank you so much. I, I truly agree with that. And I think the quicker we understand that and realize that we are made to shine in our yeah. own specific areas and our own demographics, there's a people. There are people out there that you are specifically supposed to reach, and it doesn't matter how big or small it is. Wow. But there is a demographic of people that you're supposed to connect. All the things you've went through in your life, all those scars are all to be used for God's glory and wow. to be able to help impact other people that God puts That's in your path. So true. I always say like one of the biggest um, hindrances I feel, I feel like young people have towards doing something is, oh, that's already been done. And I'm like, yeah, but not by you. And Facts. the light that you like God's going to use to shine through your book or your podcast. Like I could say something on this podcast that I say and it hits some people. Someone else could say the same thing and it hits a whole nother crowd. I'll never be able to hit because mm -hmm. they took up the responsibility to shine their light in their space. Yeah. And, um, and so it's just so powerful. And you do that in so much of what you do. And I'm excited to dive in. But first, <laughs> we have a tradition on this show, which is to kick off every episode. What is your favorite quote and why? Ooh, that's a good question. What's my favorite quote and why? Okay. So I have a few. Okay. But this was one that, and I know this sounds so funny, but it's because it came from the heart and God gave it to me. It was like... <laughs> Comparison breeds doubt, which would delay your purpose. Wow. At the end of the day, when we're comparing ourselves to other people, you're looking left, you're looking right, you're, you're looking 
off the beaten off the path of where you're supposed to be going Mm -hmm. and it's delaying you from where you're supposed to be going so if you're like if you think of um michael phelps in one of the olympic races he's swimming and in the actual meet there's a guy i think he was from brazil to the right of him he you could there's a photo out there where you see the swimmer is looking at michael phelps while he's swimming yeah and when you do that guess what the direction you're looking at you're going to drift that way versus going completely straight Mm. and it caused him to lose that race So in our lives, when we're steady comparing ourselves, it's so easy to do because, I mean, social media makes it hard for you to not see someone else's story or what chapter they're in in their life's book. Yeah. And you want to compare yourself to it when really it's like, no, don't worry about them. Mm -hmm. Maybe get inspired and motivated by other people, successes and stuff like that. But don't compare yourself to where they're at because you don't know their story. You don't know what season of life they're in, where you're at, and what God's getting ready to do. You don't even know what you're getting ready to embark on Mm -hmm. tomorrow, you know? So that's one of my favorite quotes for me. Um, I have a couple other ones, and it could be as simple. (laughs) That's so good. But I think it's like comparison such a plague right now for young people. And it's not even comparing yourself to another person. It's also comparing yourself to where you think you should be by now. Yes the timelines you thought your life was going to adhere to, or Mm -hmm. even like previous versions of yourself. I know we both have like sports and our background and even like your current day. And uh, for me in sports, I remember, so I played tennis in college and it was like, man, this time a year ago, I was beating this girl and now I'm not. So like you can can fall into the trap of comparing where you used to be. Yes. Um, And like all of that to say comparison, it just breeds. It's almost like breathing in poison to where you're currently at and being Mm -hmm. able to appreciate what God's doing to you now. So I love that. And, you know, you're such an advocate for mental health. I um, like Mm -hmm. looking at a lot of what you're doing. It's like you talked about a lot of the why behind even this this new devotional coming out of yours in July, which we'll talk about. But like the rates of mental exhaustion, anxiety and suicide, you said in your research are like two times what they were before the pandemic. And I'm such a big believer that God put us here on this earth, the things that break our heart, he put us here on this earth to be solutions for. Mm -hmm. And so I'm curious for you and all the work that you're doing, obviously it has a hold on your heart and it breaks your heart because it motivated you to be a solution. What's kind of your background? Like, why is it this specifically that's breaking your heart that led you to want to be a solution for it with all that you're doing? Great question. I think part of it was living a life that was, you know, high pace, a lot of stress, you know, after there was a point in my life where in high school, you do your high school thing, you go to school, go to practice, you play your games, but then I could come home and then I can have hours upon hours where I'm playing video games or drawing and chilling with my family. And that brought peace that brought like stability. And for some for some reason that changes when like I'll say like my junior senior year in high school when like all the you know the schools are coming and recruiting you and it, it just becomes way more pressure and there's a point in time my junior summer going into my senior year like the news was like following every step of my day they took a whole like weekend where they from when I woke up documented every single thing you get to college and it's kind of this fantasy world. Yes, you are brought in as an athlete on scholarship and all the glitz and glam literally dissipates once you're on campus. You're still you're now the new fresh blood on campus and you have to start fresh. But what people don't realize, I mean, you probably realize it, but not until it's not until you're in it that now you are stepping into the pressures of college. You still have to be a student athletics are paying for school so there's a a huge loyalty because they're the ones that's paying for you to be there but you still have to have good grades but then you have to juggle your schedule your daily day-to-day things that you need to do and try to have a life in there somewhere and the pressures of that you're and you have aspirations of trying to go to the next level Mm -hmm. so all of those things are 
I'm constantly thinking like I I can't be playing video games right now or chilling because I need to be working on my craft to be better. Yeah. And it was just like always something. I can always be faster. I can always be stronger. I can I was always for me personally. Mm-hmm. I had teammates who were fine with relaxing and just doing the average, you know, which I could have I could learn from. Yeah. And I think for me, I just saw how it impacted my life and other people's lives and I saw the deterioration. Mm-hmm. And my heart goes out to athletes now, especially when it hits close to home, when I would see some of the guys that I would coach after college. Mm-hmm. And then I'm, they're high schoolers going into college. And then I'm hearing about suicide or mm-hmm. attempts of suicide. Yeah. And it broke my heart. And in this day and age, now more than ever, you are reminded on a mm-hmm. daily basis. If it's not social media, it's the news yeah. reminding you you're not where you're supposed to be. Even though it's a false fallacy, it's a fallacy because right where you are is where God has you to be. Yeah. Obviously, you can be lazy and you can check those things or not be consistent in discipline. You can fix those things. Mm. But where we're seeing everyone's putting their highlight reels on social media and it's a rarity to see people just be 100 percent honest and real like, hey, this is not the best. I could be better in this. I could do better here this is not a perfect world. We're just constantly seeing those things and feeling like, hey, I need to be on 10 all the time. And no one's getting a mental break. No one's rest resting. And you're hearing millionaires and billionaires say, rest is for the week. I'll, I'll yeah. sleep when I die, you know? And yeah. it's, and it's false. Cause I've talked to these millionaires. I've talked to these guys and yes, they're grinding and they're working hard. But that's only a a season of their life. And then they'll take two month vacations. They're not telling you about that, you know? So that part, I would never forget. I was walking into the gym and I was thinking in my head, man, I wish I could draw more, read more, play my video games more, just so I can have a mental break. And in that moment, I'm like, I'm starting another Instagram called mentalbreak.lab so that I can remind people even if it's 30 minutes, take a mental break, Mm -hmm. whatever that is. If that's just sit in your car and do nothing, (laughs) that's self-care. You know, if you want to play your video games, play your video games and don't feel guilty about it. Yeah. Take a mental break and you will be able to be more proficient, get more done and be more satisfied and let God be able to use you instead of being way down by the world standards of yeah. what it looks like to be successful. That is so good. I something that like a theme of what you're just speaking to is just being busy. I think yeah. we live in a world that celebrates and pr- like people pride themselves on how busy they are. It's like mm-hmm. how busy your calendar is is a direct correlation with how important and insignificant you are. Yeah. And I think about Jesus. Like Jesus a preacher I love says he had a three mile per hour ministry. He walked <laughs> everywhere. And some and all of his greatest miracles were not the goal. They were interruptions to where yes. he was. And if you're not walking, you can miss the divine interruptions in your life. Even like if you are playing a video game or you are like some of my, my greatest ideas for a book or even like a podcast episode have been when I've been not busy. They've been yes. when I've been still. And there's a preacher I also love that talks about like, when the dove descended on Jesus, when he was being baptized by John the Baptist, John the Baptist, um, doves, he researched doves, doves mm-hmm. only land like any bird on things that are still. And the mm. Holy Spirit landed on Jesus. He was still. And mm-hmm. how often are we still? Right. Um, granted, I think in a world, the metrics of success, we tie the outcome and our identity. And I'm curious for you as a student athlete. Um, I want to go back to when you talked about like, like what you're seeing right now with suicide and with the Mm -hmm. mental health, just absolute pandemic of what people are feeling and you're, you've done the research. I haven't, um, I feel like, or I anticipate that a lot of that heaviness is associating our work 
our our worthiness to take up space here on this earth with yeah. what we produced or how people have responded or celebrated to what we produced. And mm -hmm. as an athlete, you're used to clear cut, you won or you lost. You know what yeah. I mean? It's like yeah. you're a winner or you're a loser. Yeah. And I know in seasons of my life where like, there's just been the outcomes haven't been there. You know, it's like, there's just been loss after loss after loss. You begin to think, I am a loser, not mm -hmm. I lost, but I am this. Right. Um, talk to me about how to begin to separate from, like, it's a good thing to care about what you do, but how you practically separate, you know, yes, God gifted you this ability to do athletics, but it's not who you are. Mm -hmm. How do you begin to do that? Oh, gosh. <laughs> I remember when I had that separation mentally. It's when you finally realize you can't do life or do any of the things that you are doing separate to Jesus. Mm -hmm. You really can't. Mm -hmm. Like, now a non believer will be like, well, I don't believe in Jesus and I'm doing this. Look how successful I am. Yeah. But then when you peel back the layers, how happy are they? What issues are they not showing you and dealing with? I'm having the conversations. I even read the book of like Deion Sanders book from way back in the day. I think it's like one of his first books. And he talks about, he had money, girls, all the things that you want, jewelry, everything. And in that book, he was so depressed and he felt like something was missing. He drove off the road and tried to take his life. He drove off the road and couldn't even do that right. In his, us, in his mentality, he, in his mind, he was like, I couldn't even take my own life. God had a different plan for him, you know? But it's a lonely, it's a lonely world in life to live when you're trying to do it on your own and you think it's all up to you. When I realized I was outside of my house and I thought to myself, I'm going to get out of this driver's seat, this metaphorical vehicle, walk around and sit in the passenger seat. And when I sat in the passenger seat, I was like, Lord, I'm going to just let you drive. I'm along for the ride. Mm. That's it. And it changed everything for me because it's a mental shift. At the end of the day, I'm trying to get a job. I'm trying to work at this place. And if that door shuts, of course, as a human being, you're like, man, I wanted that job. Yeah. But the mental shift has changed because if that door is closed, there's a reason for it. Mm -hmm. God, didn't, God didn't want you to be in that place. And he has something better for you if you're willing to trust him and be patient. Yeah. And that's where it starts to separate from the way the world is and the way how, how we view success or how we view things that are happening in our world for us. Yeah. I'm not going to I'm not going to be bent out of shape and in the dumps because something didn't happen the way I wanted it to. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, my life is not my own. Mm -hmm. I am living my life for Jesus Christ mm -hmm. and the ultimate goal and the ultimate plan. So, however he wants to use me, I'm along for the ride. If we're make if I'm like, if we're in a metaphorical vehicle and he's driving and I'm like, let's make a right here. And he's like, no, let's make this left. Yeah. I'm not going to get upset. I'm like, okay, I trust you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking I want to go stay at this holiday inn, but really he has the four seasons up there ready for me, you know? It's so true. that's how my mentality has changed. And it has been such a blessing in my life. That is so, you know, I think what's so powerful about what you said is like, you know, it says like God's word is a lamp unto our feet. We don't have the whole staircase. We have the next step. And right. when you trust the driver, I, this morning I was uh, talking with a friend and we were in Acts and it was like, you know, you think about Acts. Acts is like the beginning of the church. It's messy. It's mm -hmm. not pretty. There's confusion. The disciples right. You were dead. Now you're alive. Now you're leaving again. Come on. <laughs> I mean, you can imagine the questions, but Jesus is like, take heart in a couple of days. Like you'll have the Holy Spirit. And as we all do, they're like, how long? And he's like, mm. you're not allowed to know. We're not allowed to know. But when you trust the one that's the driver and the yes. one that's in charge of giving you the spirit, then you can trust that 
wherever he's taking you is where you ultimately want to be. So like, Mm -hmm. if you want to go to Florida, but the Holy Spirit's like, no, we're going to New Jersey. There's something better in New Jersey. Yes. Um, And I I love that you, and Deion Sanders, there's another, um, Will, I think Will Smith talked about this. Someone did, but basically like he said something along the lines of, I wish every single person on this earth could have as much money as they wanted. All the women Mm. or guys they wanted, all the things they wanted. Will Smith. Okay, so just I so saw that, that can, interview you know, recently. Yeah, yeah, and basically yeah. it was like just so you know this, just so they can know that it won't fill you. Yeah. Um, and I'm curious too, as an athlete, this is actually something I was talking with a friend with recently because I was like, I don't know the answer to this. There's the flip side of this. You go through seasons where you have wins. You go through seasons where you you accomplish by the mm-hmm. grace of God. How do you internalize those wins? but not identify with them. And what I mean by that is I think my tendency and something I'm walking through right now is, you know, I've almost done the flip side where I feel like I'm not allowed to be proud of anything. So I haven't internalized accomplishments, but because of that, when I accomplish something, I'm like, okay, what's the next thing? What's the next thing? And then I was talking to my mom recently. I was like, I know that here's this list of cool things that by the grace of God, I've been able to do. I, I don't know how to feel them. Am I allowed to feel them? Um, mm-hmm. What's the difference between feeling them versus being cocky? And like, how do you navigate that? Are we allowed to be proud of ourselves? If we right. Too- yeah. Like, what does that look like? You know what? I would say I'm still navigating through that. Yeah. Right now. Well, because I, w- I was brought up. <laughs> I was beat into my head that you just need to be married to humility. And that's like, mm-hmm. never get cocky. Don't let it go to your head. This is not of your own. Those talents were given to you by God. Yeah. And so I was more or less so far on one side of like, okay, I got that trophy. I won that. I got that scholarship. Move on to the next thing. It's next, next, next. Mm-hmm. And it took, you know, some of my friends my wife to be like, it's okay to celebrate it, yeah, you know? And still, even now, I, okay, for example, 2017, I um, got a Guinness World Record. What, in like the- In what? The most um, pull-up burpee push-ups by male in one minute. Oh my gosh, <laughs> how many is that? So I think I did 18. I think that was the number. I, I did 18. It's amazing. And so I was, I was, because in 2016, I became the face of Reebok. And then there was a, a thing that Reebok was doing where they took the top 33 athletes, all put us in like the nano six shoes or something. And we all attempted all these Guinness World Records. The first five people who went in front of me all broke records. So I was like, oh, so this is what we're doing. You're like, <laughs> so, this is the expectation. I, this is the standard. So there's no way I'm not going to break like get a zero yeah. record. So I'm like yeah. going at it. I break the record. I'm now in the book of whatever that one was. It's like a superhero one. And they spelled my last name wrong, by the way, too. They put like a T. All right, I was like, it. but thank I God I, I have like the <laughs> certificate. <laughs> All yeah. that to, all that to say is that I remember it happening. I was excited. Went home. We we like celebrated the moment. I put the certificate down and I have not looked at it. I have not framed it yet. And this has been since 2017 and I moved on to the next thing. Mm-hmm. And like I mentioned that because your reaction just now is how everyone else reacts. Yeah. Yeah. And which is rightfully so. I would react to someone if they told me that the same way. But I was so like, okay, I can't really say too much about this. It it happened. Cool. Awesome. What's next? Move on to the next thing. So it's a constant battle because it is healthy for you to be present. And our world right now isn't really present. Mm. We go to beautiful places. We experience such gorgeous things or amazing topography and what do we do we pull out our phones and we're like taking videos taking photos and one thing i'm trying to do now is before i do that take it in Mm -hmm. take it in 
take in this majest majesty of this natural uh topography or wherever i'm at or this moment with the kids at disneyland take it in first experience it appreciate it be thankful and then i can like take photos and videos of it and that alone that little practice right there helps us with these wins that we get and keeps you from being cocky because at the end of the day things come and go so why would you get cocky and Mm. and pompous yeah when this can be taken away from you like that it's just a moment that's so good and in the bible jesus they mention his he's like rain on the windowsill his it's just coming down and he's still he's he's not a hyperbole up and down his his emotions aren't super high his emotions aren't super low he is constant he is still in all the different moments and so it's like you don't need to get extra you don't need you can you can still celebrate but be thankful that god chose you to be able to experience this moment and be used that's so that's cool. how I'm like trying to still that is navigate. And it's an everyday. I think it's an everyday intention, especially when you're as an athlete, it's like you've been drilled home how to compete, how to yes. from like day one. It's just mm-hmm. in your it's in your veins. It's all you know. And I think it also goes to what's your definition of success? Because yeah. just like you said something that was so powerful, which is just like not letting the highs get too high, the lows get too low. I think even you look at Jesus's life. The reason he was able to do that, he had three years of ministry. Um, someone once put it like the Jesus life and the iceberg effect. 90% of his life, we have no idea what he, right. like, there's, it's unknown. He was anonymous. And, but in that time, he was, he was so um, intimate with the father. And when you know the magnitude of who God is, anything you do in life even if you are the president or if you, no offense to the president, if you are, it, no matter what you've accomplished, it pales in comparison when yes. you know who God is. And so I think it's like, when you know how big your God is, you're able to celebrate what he's done through you. Cause you know, it's like your celebration of what you've done. It's not a, it doesn't make him any smaller cause he's so big. Yes. Um, but it goes back to what's your definition of success? Because do you celebrate the process or the outcome? Do you celebrate mm-hmm. the cause or do you celebrate the journey, the crowd or the course that led you? Yeah. Um, and, and it's so, such an honor. It's such an yeah. honor to be used or put in that position to mm-hmm. experience it. Mm-hmm. What would you say, like, you know, if you're in a crowd with a bunch of young student athletes, how would you encourage them to redefine what success means to them? Not to take themselves so seriously. Because mm-hmm. at the at the end of the day, you have a task at hand. And like in sports, it's very clear cut, win or loss. Okay. Yeah. You're either a winner or a loser in the world's eyes. If you take that on. You can be controlled. You can be controlled on how people can manipulate you, use you. But if you find yourself centered and God is the center of your your sport, okay? If God is at the center of that sport, it's gonna mm-hmm. you're gonna always be tethered and connected to Jesus through the wins and losses, but it's not your identity. Your your identity isn't your that the fact that you won. Your identity isn't the fact that you lost because at the end of the day, God has put you in that position to be used in those losses. You can have such a powerful win because you could have been treated a certain way. You could have lost that game and pay, people are paying attention to how you respond. Do you react or do you respond? Are you reacting out of your flesh when you lost and you have a bad attitude and your integrity is terrible? or are you the are you the same athlete, the same person in a win or a loss? Of That's course, tough. you're bummed if you lose a game. But does it change who Annie is? Does it change who Andy is? Does it change who Danielle is? No, you should be the same person regardless. Mm-hmm. In that part, you can have double the wins. Mm-hmm. You can win in losses, 
because someone in a crowd could be paying attention to the person that you are and you could be a light in a, a world that's so dark because of how you respond in situations and when you win are you cocky no i mean people love people love drama so they will highlight cockiness and all that stuff because they want to build you up to break you down mm. but at the end of the day you cannot knock or be upset you can't help but be drawn to a humble person a humble spirit who is not taking this game so serious because at the end of the day we saw what covid did covid shut our world down mm -hmm. who are you if you're not playing in that sport yeah. like there was a lot of depression that took place because yeah. our identity is in all the different things that they do and who am i with those stripped away mm. but if your identity is in jesus jesus lets you know who you are he's the architect of your life the more you're tethered to him, the more you're reading your Bible, you get to learn more about who you are. Mm -hmm. And you find out how much God loves you and how beautiful you are and how much he sees you as such a <laughs> apple of his eye. You know, he loves you so much. And it's just a, a change of what the world is telling you. Mm -hmm. The world is telling you. This is how you are. This is how you're identified if you do this. Th if you're successful, if you have eight rings, you're a goat. You know, it and if you don't, you're a loser. Mm -hmm. And that's not how it is in the kingdom of God. Yes. Okay, so you on your hat you have I think that's an anchor. Is that Yes, it is. Okay, well, as you were talking, <laughs> I was just thinking like it's so true you root your identity in God and it serves as this anchor. Like whether it's a stormy season or a calm season, naturally mm -hmm. with the current you're going to drift, but that anchor keeps you keeps you stable. So maybe you move a little bit, but it keeps you steady in that consistency and and I think too like back to what does success mean all throughout the Bible, the people that like God called blessed, it was so opposite of how we would define blessed. Job yes. losing everything because he lost everything. He was able to be humble enough to when God revealed himself to say, you are all that I need. So like, ironically, Job losing everything was Job being more blessed than when he had more before he lost it. I think about John the Baptist, you use the word goat, like Jesus called John the Baptist, basically the greatest. He was mm -hmm. the goat to Jesus. And John the Baptist was beheaded in prison. And right. he doubted if Jesus was even the son of God. And he was like, are you the one? So I think as a world, like redefining what success looks like for us. Um, and I, I'm curious, like, for you, like, yes, redefining what it looks like on our end, what do you think are God's metrics for success? And how do we adopt that into our mentality moving forward? Whether it's for sports, I know like a lot of student athletes listen to this podcast, but also people that aren't student athletes and they're in mm -hmm. the art or they're building a content like on social media. What are God's metrics of success that you think I, are worth celebrating? I really think God's metrics of success is are you using the talents that I gave you for mm -hmm. the ultimate goal? Mm -hmm. It's really, we make it so much more intricate than it really is. God is, God wants the message, but, um, <laughs> wow. It was like, God wants the message spread across the world. At the end of the day, he has a heart. He, he sent his only son here to die on a cross. So he could give us a chance at eternal life. We have time now to share the good news about that and give you an opportunity to live your life for Christ and share the gospel and use your specific talents and gifts to do that. Mm. And at the end of the day, I really believe when we're standing face to face with God, he's going to look and be like, okay, I gave you talent to sing, to draw, you're an athlete. Okay, did you use that? to glorify me and he's going to go down that list and can you say can you confidently say i'm using my gifts and my talents to glorify god yeah and in this moment you hearing this let this be a reminder if not 
God, I repent right now. I want to make sure that I'm using my gifts and talent to glorify you. And I'm going to start that right now in this very moment. I had that moment driving in a car and I was like, I am building a platform on social media and it's steadily growing. I want to bring honor to you. Mm -hmm. I want to do more posts that glorify you. I don't want to just entertain. I want God to be all, when people land on my Instagram or land on my TikTok or YouTube, I want them to see Jesus. Mm -hmm. There's going to see a fallible man who is not perfect, mm -hmm. but you're going to find out that right away you're going to know, oh, he loves Jesus. Mm -hmm. Or that's a person who cares about sharing the love of Jesus Christ or the Bible or inspiring and motivating other people to dive into his word. I mean, right now we're doing um, a dive in Proverbs. Mm -hmm. We're on like day seven of just going through the Proverbs. And what we, I didn't care who it was. I just felt like God spoke to me to like, so let's start this. And we're doing it on the day of the month. Mm -hmm. So if it's the 20, 20th or the 21st, yeah. you read Proverbs 21. Yeah. And whatever jumps out to you, put it in a comment section. I'm going to share what God spoke to me. And if three people do it, three yeah. people watch it. Those are the three that are supposed to. Mm -hmm. I don't care what the number is. I'm just going to listen to God and glorify him with my gifts and talents. And to see and hear some of the DMs that are being sent to me right now. If it was just for that reason, I'm like, okay, God, I get it. You just never know who needs you. You never know who needs Kelly listening to this, Ryan listening to this, Brandon listening to this. You never know yours. Like you mentioned, Annie, earlier, you could say something, but another person can say it and it hits different. Mm -hmm. So yeah. in this moment right now, if you're fe feeling that stirring, you know what? I need to glorify God. I think that's truly part of his metrics. Yeah, that is so good. I, it, what kept coming back to my heart was like, will you be faithful to the one? To the mm -hmm. one. We live in a world that's like, you, you're only as impactful as is the amount of people that are following you or the amount of people that have seen. Like, we can't even have a nice meal without taking a picture of it because it doesn't count if you make a meal and you don't totally. take a picture of it. Like, <laughs> only, you know what I mean? So it's like, yeah. will you be faithful to the one? I remember um, when I wrote my first book and I self-published it, like had no idea what to do. And I was like, mm -hmm. I don't. I don't know if this is going to touch anybody, but if it just touches one person, yes. and I think it's like, will you be faithful to the one when it doesn't look sexy, when you don't have a following, when you don't have people that are clapping for you? Mm -hmm. um, and a quote that I love, it's like, what's celebrated in the light is, a, is an indication of all the work that was done in the dark. It's like, are you willing to put in the yes. work in the dark? And yes. Jesus did that. Like, yes, he spoke. He did Sermon of the Mount and Sermon of the Mount and spoke to crowds. He also, like multiple times when, for the miracles, like when he raised, um, when he raised the, the woman who was dead and he was like, Oh, she's just sleeping. He sent people out of the room. Like he mm -hmm. didn't want anybody watching. And I think it's like, are we willing to live our lives like that? And, um, and I think what's so powerful of, of everything you were just saying, like when it comes to just the success and God, like being obedient to your gifts, um, you've probably seen this too. I feel like we live in a world. It's funny. Not that I can't relate to this. I've always been such a fire kind of girl. Like, you know, aim to fire. I just do it. I'm like, no you know, way. Could suck. <laughs> I have no idea, but I believe God will course correct me. But right. I do think there's a lot of people that they they think they're doing the thing, but they're not really doing the thing. Mm -hmm. Or God gives them an idea, but they're not obedient to actually doing it. It's one thing to have an idea for the company or the platform or the movie or the show. It's another thing to say, Hey, let's get a game plan and do it. Yeah. What do you think is different for you or different for people who actually are faithful to execute on what God gave them and not just have the idea stay in their heart? I mean, work ethic at the end of the day, it takes work to follow through. It takes mm -hmm. work to be consistent. It takes work to be disciplined. It takes work to actually get up and do the thing. Mm -hmm. And there could be two people with the same idea. The one person who actually executes 
will see the finish line and then see the fruit of their labor. The other person who doesn't won't. And then they will be that person like, oh my goodness, I had that idea. So (laughs) you had the idea, but you didn't execute. You didn't finish it. You didn't follow through. Mm -hmm. That other, the person that actually does that will see the fruit of it. Mm -hmm. And I think, unfortunately, we've all been there where God's placed something on your heart. And like my wife, perfect example right now, my wife is in school and she was talking to a friend and her friend's like, I need to start school too. I need to get on it, but it's going to take so long. Yeah. Two years seems daunting when you're just starting, but my wife just did it. She's doing it. And she has less than a year left, you know, versus the person who hasn't started yet. It's still two years daunting because you know what? You didn't take the step. So at the end of the day, if you don't take the necessary steps and you're not willing to work and be patient, I feel like that's a huge part of it. Our world is so now, 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 quick, 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 quick. I mean, if an app doesn't download in a nanosecond, we're like, oh my gosh, what's wrong with our Wi-Fi? <laughs> you know? So my phone's broken. <laughs> yes, my phone's broken. Now I need to do it. You know, it's just yeah. everything. Like you're on Instagram. If it's if you at one point the algorithm was like the sweet spot was like seven seconds. If you don't, if you're more than that, they're gonna swipe past your information. I mean, you have to be patient. Mm. That patience is worth it Mm. that's where i feel like we we can cause ourselves to be stagnant yeah because we're not willing to work and we're not patient that's good you know it's like that uh it's some adage adage proverb not proverb in the bible but anyways quote um which is basically (laughs) like the the best time to plant a tree was 400 years ago the second best time is today uh, you mm. know what I mean? It's like, if you mm-hmm. could have done it forever ago, you should have, but you didn't. So the best time to do it now is now. Um, I'm curious for you, what do you think are the biggest fears that are underneath preventing people from moving forward? And like, how would you speak life into those fears that people have that are kind of underneath the procrastination of not starting the work ethic to doing their goals? Yeah, they underlining probably don't think they're worthy they don't necessarily think i am i can do it or i don't i don't think anyone cares like you may have been god may have spoken to your heart to start a bible study on instagram but then well who's gonna watch who's gonna care i'm i mean i'm not i'm not eloquently spoken i mean neither was moses (laughs) god used (laughs) <laughs> hey god hey god used him yeah. god can use you where you're at it doesn't matter you know um jonah was called to go oh my gosh i could, I could go deep into that but jonah was like no i'm not going to go share the gospel there they need to they need to die they need to um deal with the wrath and god was like i'm going to get your attention and use you no matter what so stop running yeah. you know that's we good. need to stop running and understand God will call whoever, the mm-hmm. least of these. You are worthy. You are worth it. You can be used and never second guess it because who created you? Mm-hmm. God created you. So are you, you're, are you telling me the person who created you is fallible? Mm-hmm. That he made a faulty human being? No. You are here for a reason and you were uniquely created the way you are for that reason so instead of looking at all your fallacies all the issues that you see yourself that has been basically you know subconsciously told to you by the world and just say you know what i'm just going to take one step at a time get one percent better every day literally Look at it as like, I'm going to get 1% better every day. You go two days, three days, four days, five days. Now you're 5% better than where you were. Anyone can work with 1% increments. Before you know it, 30 days have passed and you're 30% better than where you were. 
Mm. Yeah. And that's how, if we want to be practical, just say, I'm going to, I'm going to try to be 1% better every day. I'm just going to get up and do this 1%. Yeah. Go back to bed, do it, do it again tomorrow. That's so good. then when you look back, I actually did it. That's good. I, even, I mean, that's so biblical, like one step at a time. I was thinking about this too, because I'm like, okay. Um, someone once asked me, you know, how do you, like, if you have a big goal, a lofty goal, how do you actually start creating a game plan for it? I'm like, you got to mm -hmm. figure out the simplest way to make this happen and yeah. do one step at a time. And you think about Genesis, God is God. He could have created the whole world in a sneeze. But he didn't. <laughs> he did. He did yeah. one thing at a time. He created the light. He created mm -hmm. the land. He created the animals one day. He created us one day. And I think he was trying to mimic to us. There's a rhythm to getting things done. You don't do it all at once. You right. do one thing at a time, and then you take a break, and then one thing at a time, and you rest. Back to what you said at the beginning of this podcast, like you rest, you mm -hmm. recalibrate. Um, yes. And so I think that's so powerful. And I think all of this to say, like. Whether it's the metrics of success, whether it's learning how to rest, whether it's being a high performer and learning the dance of an off day, a recovery day, using that for your performance to glorify God, like seeking mm -hmm. first the kingdom. You said it, um, you said in one of your videos, no one taught me what it meant to be a student athlete that loves Jesus. And so I honestly want to round out before we talk about your devotional with <laughs> What do you wish you knew as a student athlete when it came to following Jesus and the freedom following Jesus gives you to be the best athletic version, student and athletic version of yourself? I wish I knew it was going to be truly an unpopular direction and mm. just to be confident in it because some people going into it was like, well, I'm going to be a Christian athlete and I'm going to win over my campus and all these people are going to come to know Jesus. But no one tells you the behind the scenes of that. You're getting made fun of like the, the back and forth internal struggle of wanting to experience what everyone else is experiencing. And the fight between is this, um, I have to, I have to do this or I don't, or, well, God's not going to want me to do that. So you reluctant, reluctantly do it, don't do it. But really it's like, no, you get to not do that because this is a better direction. This is a better lifestyle. God is trying to save you from a lot of stuff that you don't need to go through. And, and God wants to use you. But if you're distracted and you're doing things that the world wants you to be a part of and take part. God can't use you in that moment if you don't want to be used. And sometimes God will make it a way to like, <laughs> I want to still use you, you know, and it won't make sense till later on down the road. But I just wish someone would have told me like, yeah, just because you become a Christian doesn't mean there's this magic wand yeah. over your life. And now everything's going to be good and it's going to be smooth. Nope, you're going to, it's going to be even, you're going to deal with harder issues, but it's going to be better. It's going to be a better way of living. And guess what? God's going to have your best interests. That's so There's good. a lot of things that you're going to have to sacrifice and say no to, but you're saying yes to so much better than you realize. I, and even to use this parallel to being a student athlete. Like there was a lot of things I had to say no to as a student yes. athlete. I couldn't go out on Fridays with my friends who were my sorority. I couldn't, um, like if we had formals on Saturday nights, I couldn't drink and have fun because I had matches on Sunday. Like yes. there was so much I had to say no to, but the, but the upside of saying mm -hmm. no, what I got, the fruit that came from those no's was so much more than those like temporary highs or those temporary ups. And um, that's the the best illustration like I've heard in such a long time on this podcast. I think it's such a good reminder too for people embracing Jesus in your life. It doesn't make your life easier. It makes it mm -mm. better. And in yeah. fact, I think sometimes it makes it harder, um, but it makes it better. And it's like, yeah. choose your 
It's hard to do life without Jesus. It's hard to do life with Jesus, but it's better. Choose your heart. It's hard to be out of shape. It's hard to be in shape. Choose your heart. Yes. Uh, At the end of the day, choose your heart. Choose your heart. Jesus makes it better. Yeah. We may have just came out with a quote. Choose your heart. Choose your heart. But Jesus makes it better. Jesus makes it better. He says, my, um, my yoke is easy. My burden is light. You still have a burden to bear. You still have a yoke to carry, but it's yes. light. It's easy. Um, and so I love that. And, and I want to round out with your upcoming devotional that's coming out in July. So um, lead with faith, play with purpose, a hundred day devotional for athletes. I'm telling you, I'm selfishly so excited for this. I was talking <laughs> to someone yesterday. I was like, um, who's going through a hard time. She was injured. She's a beach volleyball player. And she's like, I just am struggling with identity right now. I'm like, there's mm. a book. Pre-order it. You, It's coming out soon. You're so awesome. about this book, where you find it, and why you wrote it. Ah, guys, when I tell you I'm so excited for this, I can't even put it in words because it. I put my heart in this book, blood, sweat, and tears. And mm. it's literally the book I wish I had when I was a student athlete. It is a cheat code to the things that you're going to have to encounter. And unfortunately, I had to go through some of those things and learn and receive scars. But it's Mm -hmm. for you not to have to receive those scars. These these devotionals are impactful. They are. um, They're life altering. And it's really relatable stuff and interactive. Like you Mm -hmm. can take this and go through it by yourself or you can go through it in a group which i would totally you know say you should probably do that and suggest you to do that with other people because there's a lot of questions that i pose and it's broken up in you know pre-game game time post-game keys you know that's so good and i'm i'm telling you for an athlete it's going to make sense i'm Mm -hmm. And it's something you can add to utility bu- your utility belt. The vision I had for it is like once you receive your playbook, you also receive this book on top of it. Because wow. this playbook is going to help you learn the, um, the game. This, pra- this playbook is going to help you learn the strategies of your specific sport. This book is going to help you learn the strategies of life and how to navigate through the choppy waters of being a student athlete or a leader period so good and so needed and i think too like everyone i so i love i love devotionals um they're my favorite to write they're my favorite to read even like mm. think about the lord's prayer this day our daily bread we're yes. given sufficiency for this day devotionals remind you of that because they hold you accountable for like a daily quota of like spiritual consumption and so mm-hmm. i think too even with student athletes we're meant to be part of a team we know what that's like so guys get this book but get it for your friends and do it yes. together it's one thing to read it's another thing to digest and absorb and you do that in community through talking about it yeah um, so andy thank you where can people find you where can they pre-order the book because i know they're gonna want to after this absolutely conversation. yes uh um, I made it very simple. My social media is Andy L. Dooley, D-O-O-L-E-Y. That's Instagram, TikTok, X, YouTube. And then you can also pre-order the book. If it's very, to make it simple, there's Amazon. Go to Amazon, type in Lead with Faith, Play with Purpose, and you can pre-order there. I'll have on my Instagram and TikTok, though, a link that you can go to my landing page that was just revealed to me two days ago. So I can't wait for to unveil that today on Instagram. But um, I, I appreciate the fact that you would take a look, take a chance, get this book because it's going to be impactful. It's going to be powerful and life changing. And it helps athletes be able to navigate through all the things that are going to be thrown at them, especially in this day and age Mm -hmm. with how sports have changed. Yeah. And, and this just came to mind, but you know, someone listening around, they're like, well, I'm not an athlete. Paul tells us we're all running a race. If you're following Jesus, you're an athlete because you're Mm -hmm. running this race. And I was talking to someone earlier on this podcast and they were like, 
being being a Jesus follower every day, it's like you're at war. Like you're mm -hmm. at war with the enemy. You're at war with what he's telling you. Like we are all spiritual athletes. And yep. so I think like the lessons in this book, I know what they're going to be. They apply to all people because we're all athletes, whether you're physically on a court, a field, a track, or you're just an athlete in life performing in the arts with your friend group in college. Like, so yes. and, just, if you, and if you yeah. consider yourself a leader, which all of us yeah. are, yes, this is for you. So good. This is definitely for leaders. Yes. And if you don't feel like you're a leader, you need the book to be reminded you're a leader because we exactly. are all leaders. Um, so all that to say, no one's excused. Everyone needs to read this. And Andy, <laughs> I just want to give kudos to you for being obedient to what God put on your heart. You're impacting so many people. And it was an honor to have you today and shine in your light on the show. We so appreciate it. Thank you so much, Andy. I appreciate you. And you're doing an amazing job. You're doing amazing work. And the light is really shining through you. It makes sense that... Your, type, your podcast is what it is, but you're impacting so many people and it's truly an honor for me to be on your show. Thanks, Andy. All right, everybody, we'll see you on the next show. And I hope that this blessed you and encouraged you, reminded you that God gave you a unique light and it is your job to shine it in this world because we need you to. That being said, if you were blessed by this message and you can think of anybody else that also needs this type of encouragement, do me a favor, hit like, hit subscribe, leave me a comment. Uh, it helps me out a lot and helps this message that I do believe God gave my heart to share with the world gets out. I hope you have such an amazing rest of your day.